arrived at Highclere Castle. It's actually closed to the public today, but because Charlie bought us a membership, we have got a private tour and afternoon tea. It's a very misty, grey, typical English December day. But even on a day like today, it looks absolutely magical. I'm excited to get inside. About the architecture, darling. So well, here's a few facts that we've learned today. Uh -huh. And now I'm really interested. So, firstly, same architect, Charles Barry, as the Houses of Parliament. So you can see it. As soon as she said it, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. Even the stone and like, yeah, all of the detailing. Interestingly, there was internally there was an architect, same architect as St Pancras, and you could almost Pancras. Pancras. I always say Pancras. <laughs> um, what were the other interesting? And facts? he also designed the British telephone box. Oh yeah, um, which is other intriguing. Fact, technically, this house has only had two owners. Wow. So one owner, which were the bishops of something. And <laughs> In then, its six hundred year history. Yeah, and then the the Carnarvons, mm -hmm. um, and they're only on the eighth earl. So the eighth. Which is pretty impressive. And think. the sixth, along with um, Howard Carter, discovered Tutankhamun. Tutan and the seventh is quite interesting because he is the one that's referred to in the crown as Porchy, who's a good friend of the Queen, because he yes. was in real life a good friend of Queen mm. Elizabeth. So a lot of the things that um, Lady Carnarvon was saying happened in this house did inspire a few storylines in Downton Abbey, like one of the bedrooms being used as an operating theatre during the war. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, it's fascinating history. I mean, it's so mm. even as chatting to a chap that works here, that um, five aeroplanes over World War Two crashed in the because oh, there's five thousand acres, mm. there's four or five aeroplanes, and there's a few memorials actually because one of them is an American bomber, a B-12. Um, on the property. I mean, because the, the property, the building is 600 foot tall, but the hills over here are 800, so they, they marked out the castle, but they crashed into the hills. Yeah. Mm. Should we just go and have a quick look at the secret garden? Yeah. So another very interesting fact that we heard today, one of those rooms she referred to as a withdrawing room, and of course nowadays we call these rooms drawing rooms. It's a great fact. And look, so yeah, in, in relation to here, and I'd imagine most of the houses, the withdrawing room, which we now call drawing rooms, are like one off or two off the dining room. And then the smoking room is kind of on the other side. Um, yeah, not something we would want to entertain now, but it was fascinating. I found the smoking room thing quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, look, in our house, I, given it was a farmhouse, we call it the drawing room. I don't know what that room would have been used for originally, but ours isn't quite the grand house like this. We were just talking to Lady Carnarvon and saying there's quite a few similarities. Similarities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this house and our house, um, with things like the staircase having the same wood from a, an old battleship. Or they actually said Napoleon's ship here. They, they said a Napoleonic ship here. Napoleonic ship. Ours would have been out of like a merchant trading ship or something like that, but um, very interesting, right? So naturally we've come on a little investigative journey to find 
the Downton Abbey kitchen garden. This looks like we're on the right tracks. There seems to be a greenhouse down here and a little walled garden. Lady Carnarvon was saying she's very into her gardening, so let's see what's going on. It's always a tricky time of year when it comes to investigating gardens because everything is rather finished, but let's go and see. These are. I imagine in the spring and summer this is a rather beautiful herbaceous border. What are they? Penstemon. Penstemon. Raven. Really like She's got any euphorbia in there. Some lovely climbing roses against the beautiful stone wall. Nothing currently growing in the greenhouse, but I can see that the garden has been well tended. They've trimmed down their herbaceous border just like we've done. That huge greenhouse, my goodness, I could quite happily fill that. And then a lovely rose garden. This reminds me of the little rose garden area in Chiswick. Gorgeous. I just asked Charlie what kind of vine this is, and what did you tell me, darling? It's a hydrangea. Petiolaris. How do you recall? You are no, a geek. My, this is an example of my, like, at school teachers always used to say, now, Charles Irons, why, why, why do you only remember all the pointless facts? And that is literally me. I Latin never, names of plants. I could never remember any of the useful stuff or what school deemed useful stuff yeah. for exams, but I could remember all the pointless stuff. Hydrangea petiolaris. Yeah, but the, actually, well, this, is this must look this is incredible. This is really established. It's like, almost like a this. wisteria level yeah. so trunk. You can still see like the hydrangea flowers. Gosh, we um, need to come back in spring. And they are impressive. They are. Um, so it's like obviously, a, it's, I think it is the only climbing hydrangea, but I could be wrong on that. It's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, this garden will look stunning in spring, summer. Oh, there's another section, like there's another little signpost. Well, my darlings, we have finished our day at Highclere Castle. Cute wanting to say down to Navi. I've not vlogged front on yet today, and that is because I'm just still very sniffly. So I feel like, I feel like I, I look, I look as sniffly as I sound, but we've had the most magical time and what were your impressions like real life versus film so from the outside mm -hmm. i think it massively lives up to the grandeur and impressiveness uh -huh. i think inside's always going to be slightly underwhelming purely well purely because downton abbey sets such a high bar because they're very clever in any tv series and film mm. how they film things and make rooms feel bigger or different to how they are yes i wouldn't say i was too underwhelmed it was still really impressive mm. Um, I think like one little constructive criticism was I wish they had all the fires lit. They didn't have any fires lit, which was a bit <laughs> yeah. disappointing actually. Because I was like, God, you've got all these fires laid up and they clearly do light them. Yeah. But the Christmas tree was amazing, right? What was mm -hmm. that, 25 feet? I think like, they, were, they were debating, but somewhere between 20 and 30 feet Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, really amazing to meet Lady Carnarvon and chat to her, who's the wife of the current Earl. Yeah. Um, and they've lived here since 2001 or one, three, yeah. some early 2000. Um, and I'd, I'd love to come back on a, we want to come back and almost see it different seasons, don't we? Yeah, definitely. It'd be rather <clears> magical <throat> coming when it's snowing. I think that would be an amazing vista. They I were mean, saying interestingly that a lot of the tower. scenes that were filmed as like bedroom scenes, they actually didn't film those here because the rooms, although it's a huge house, the individual rooms are actually quite small. So they said that, um, for example, a cameraman had to be like in a cupboard <laughs> to the film some of the The thing is, the rooms bits. aren't small in terms of like, a lot of the rooms are probably a similar size to our bedroom, which is quite a big bedroom, but small in terms of filming in, right? Yeah. Because you, when you think about it, I don't think many scenes in bedrooms in any TV or film mm. won't be a studio because of the size they need. Yeah. But then in, in a way, like, I think that was, the, yeah, you're right though. It's really interesting to think they came here and filmed one of the films Yeah. in only five weeks. They That's did five amazing. weeks of filming. And then because a lot of it would have been internally shot in studios, mm. um, but it is amazing seeing like the library room. That f the library room yeah. is not underwhelming. That felt impressive, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and a lot of the a lot of the furniture that they have here, uh, just naturally, is obviously what they featured <coughs> in the um, the TV series. But you know, Charlie and I just love old houses, so for us to see um, see it all up close was really quite magical. So yeah, that was a lovely advent gift, darling. Yeah, Thank good. you. And now we've got a scenic drive. Look around around the estate to get back again. I think the other thing that's been that blew my mind a bit is the vast, the vastness of the land around it, where you don't see any properties. Did they say six thousand acres? Five thousand acres was the figure given. Point the camera oh, wow, this direction. Yeah. 
That's that. rather amazing, isn't it? Let's get the Downton soundtrack playing, darling, shall we? stop into Woodstock and this little shop here what's it called oh, it's the antique shop no I think it's the pub oh, it's the pub it's actually snowing outside the pub it Charlie was. and I came to Woodstock about five years ago this time five years ago Just before we moved to the Cotswolds look how cute that post office is that's literally like the shop in the holiday um, and we stayed in a hotel which is known to be one of the most haunted hotels in England, country. in the country. Um, it's a really sweet little town, as you can see. It's quite see. a big town though, Woodstock. I don't know if I'd agree with that. It's only really two streets, High well, Street and Market it's got Street. got like six or seven pubs. Oh really? Yeah, it's, it's a, a very big town, I'd pub say. heavy town. Um, but it's the town right next to Blenheim Palace. I don't even know if it's a town, it's more of a village. No, it's definitely a town. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I wouldn't call it a big town, but it, it's honestly a similar size to Shipston. Really? Yeah. Okay, my darlings, we are back home again. I've taken my headband off. It was starting to give me a little bit of a headache where it was pressing into my head in the same place continuously. I guess the opposite of a good reflexology. It was too much prodology on my head. Um, but yeah, we're home again now and I think we're both very much in the mood to watch the first Downton Abbey film. So that is on the agenda. I realized that the vlog that went up yesterday, <laughs> sorry it took me a while to figure that out, um, I said I was going to film try on clips of my H&M bits and I never did, I just <laughs> never got around to filming them and I still have not tried on my H&M bits, they're still hung up on the um, doorway there but this knit was in the order and I couldn't even tell before but it's got the cutest little scalloped bottom and scalloped sleeves which I think is so adorable. So maybe tomorrow I'll um, I'll do a little try on and I'll show you because today, to be honest, I feel quite pooped, quite tired. Anyway, I've got a delivery downstairs um, and it's Christmas gifts for a few girls that I'm gifting to this year. But before I unbox that with you, the new delivery that's arrived downstairs, I wanted to show you my version of these items because they are so useful and they are makeup bags from the flat lay company i think they just make the most amazing stocking fillers or gift ideas so the, this is the one that i use and comes with me on every trip every single holiday this has got all of my makeup in them what's so clever about them is they so i've not like tidied this or cleaned it in preparation to show you so you can literally see all of my stuff inside but what makes them so good is that as you can see they really really open out almost completely flat because what I used to do before having these is I would always tip all of my makeup out into a hotel sink just so that I could see everything and now because they really do open up like entirely you can see all of your items in one place and then when you want to go when you're checking out you literally just zip it and jobs are good and you're you're ready to go you're ready to leave and it just makes finding that little lip liner like when your lip liners get to this big <laughs> then it can be very hard to find them I'm nothing against this makeup bag um, but for example say this was your makeup bag and there was only the little zippy hole at the top you'd be digging you'd be rummaging and it just takes forever to find things whereas whereas with these styles of bags everything is out so easy to find if you ask me to find an eyebrow 
pencil in three seconds, rummage, 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 it's literally right there. It makes my life so much easier. So that's one style, that's the one that I take with me everywhere with all my makeup in. I never unpack it. If I've got an overnight stay, I don't even need to think about it, I just grab that bag. And that's their zippy style, whereas this one is kind of like an upside down shower cap and it's on a, um, what do you call it, a string cord. And this one, actually, if I open up the string, completely, oh my god, I don't want to do it, but completely opens up. I have shown you these before whenever I've done, like, packing with me videos. And it essentially becomes, like, a flat bit of material. So once again, you can see all of your items just completely open. And with skincare, again, like I showed you the lip liner example, sometimes I take tiny weeny little things with me because a lot of the things in my travel makeup bag are travel size minis for obvious reasons like little dinky serums and if I had a traditional star makeup case I would just never find these things and they would just always get forlorn and lost in the bottom and then in a matter of seconds you just pull the cord and you are ready to go this one actually has a little pocket on the front so I've got some cotton pads in there I don't think I've got anything in the other pocket no, nothing in that pocket. This one with my makeup in has got a zip pocket. I think I used to have cotton pads in there, but that's now. They've now run out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you my version. Mine are old and tattered and very well used. I've been using these for every single trip for the last two or three years. I think it was actually Scarlett that I have to thank for introducing me to these because she asked for one. I think they used to sell them on ASOS, I'm not sure where they sell them now but I'll leave them linked down below. Um, she asked for one a few years ago and I was like, oh my gosh, that is genius. So yeah, these are mine and I'll just quickly unbox the ones that I've got downstairs for gifts this year and I'll show you some of the new kind. Just very, very quickly while I'm showing you really good kind of last minute stocking filler ideas. This is a company that I recently worked with on Instagram. They're called DM and it's kind of to fragrance what beauty pie is to beauty, AKA they go straight to the factory, straight to the manufacturer because fragrances, as much as I love a luxury fragrance, you're mostly paying for the marketing. <laughs> they are so overpriced for what is essentially scented liquid. You know, and I don't like to be ripped off with things. I don't mind spending good money on things, but I just don't like to be ripped off. And yes, beauty privacy do do fragrances, but that is exactly what this company do. So what you can do is order this discovery set. This is not an ad, by the way, but I did work with them on Instagram. You can order this discovery set, and I think if you're lucky, there might be some left on a link that I'll leave linked down below where you can get this for free. You can get the discovery set for free. You try out the fragrance samples. It smells so good just opening this. It's amazing. They are incredibly good quality fragrances. And then you choose your favorite and then you can order the full size one. So you could either give someone just the discovery set for Christmas or you could give them the discovery set with then a voucher to buy the full size version. The one that I love, it's quite like ambery, musky. I think it's got sandalwood. Oh, it's gorgeous. Almost. Do you remember when all the boys used to wear Abercrombie? Was it called Fierce? It's got a little bit of that to it, but slightly more girly. And it's quite woody and smoky, really nice for this time of year, quite masculine. And I quite like masculine fragrance. I'm not so mad on the top notes, but the way that this sittles, sittles? Sits and settles, <laughs> is so lovely. So this, I think, is genius, making luxury fragrance so much more affordable. So I thought I'd give them a little shout out. Anyway, um, let's go downstairs. Pop the Downton Abbey film on, I'll show you the new flat lay bags um, and then I think we're going to make a nice yummy gnocchi for our dinner. This is a nice festive backdrop. So this is how beautifully presented the flat lay company bags normally come. I will open them up to show you. So this one is a standing up makeup brush case. I think this is just such an amazing gift for someone who is a makeup lover. And may Do you know what? Maybe if you know that the person that you're gifting is a makeup lover but you don't want to like risk getting the wrong foundation shade or a lipstick color that they won't love then this is such a good idea this 
I think it's the perfect gift for someone who I'm not gonna name because I think they might be watching the vlogs. So I'm not gonna unbox this one with you. I might do a double order of these actually because I do feel like maybe, maybe I could do with a new one, but there's some info on the back. So what does it say? Time saving. Yes, it is. No more rummaging and you can just grab them and go. I did not know that they were machine washable. Eight elastic brush holders on the inside. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so you can see here that they do completely flatten out. This is a really gorgeous kind of, I will open this one and show you. I think I'll be able to get it back in. Oh, this one is like a almost greeny champagne color. So it comes all the way out to flat. And then just like I showed you upstairs, oh, this is just gorgeous. Velvety, do you know, I'm definitely treating myself to one of these as well. So I'll keep this one and then I'll buy another one. Yeah, and then you can just pull the drawstring everything gets all scooped up into the middle mine doesn't normally close that much because it's so full so look how lovely this is this velvety fabric is just absolutely gorgeous and something else that makes these amazing is because they're so squidgy if you are short on suitcase space they really kind of like shove in um and they're not like a big massive bulky solid makeup bag as much as i love the look of these beautiful kind of vanity cases they just don't really work if you're filling your suitcase to the brim, which I definitely do. That is gorgeous, and I feel like this would wash really well. It's got a um, white clean lining, and then these are the makeup brush holding elastic sections that it mentioned, which is super duper useful. So that's that style, and then this style is like the one that I showed you upstairs with my personal makeup in it. So once again, you can see that it completely opens up so you can easily rummage your bits and bobs inside. Um, stackable design, yeah, that's a good idea. Just a really wonderful idea. And in my opinion, such a good gift. And I know that people 100% recycled packaging, that's good. People that I have gifted these to in the past have been so grateful and are like, I don't know how I ever had a different kind of makeup bag. It just makes so much sense and I love them. And yeah, I thought I would recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend these as Christmas gifts. So I will leave them linked in the description box down below. It says that this is the Lilac Daisy makeup bag. I wouldn't say that's Lilac, I'd say that's like a sage green. Who knows, maybe it's the crazy lighting in here, but anyway, there we go. Flat lay makeup bags, epic, epic gift idea. Okay, the fire is lit. I think Charlie is actually just upstairs preparing today's advent calendar so we'll have a little look at that shortly but the lovely thing is when we left today hello Dexy my lovely king um we actually got a little goodie bag which is so sweet and it included this Christmas at High Clear book recipes and traditions from High Clear Castle oh signed by uh Fiona Countess of Carnarvon let's have a little look Christmas is coming Planning and preparation, decking the halls, Christmas tree, gifts and shopping. So I wonder if this is going to be full of little festive tips. How glorious. Things to do in October. Fasting and feasting. Christmas cards. Their slow gin recipe. Ooh, yummy. Well, what a gorgeous book. So I'm just going to have a little rummage through here. Love things like this, just such a cozy read. How she did her at-home DIY wreath. Some history. Ooh, a high clear Christmas quiz. Love that. Porridge, not a fan of porridge. <gasps> Roasted chestnut delicious mmm lovely so yeah this looks like a very wholesome book I'm going to have a little flick through ooh yum in front of the fire it's advent calendar time do you think that noise is a sausage dog sneaking yeah yeah listen hang on Oh, 
won't come much up. There's yeah. a sausage <laughs> on the stairs. Like, he absolutely hates missing out. He's and whenever we're chatting to the camera, such FOMO. Let's be honest, he knows we're not chatting to a camera, but he thinks we're chatting and he's missing out. Mm. Um, <laughs> Daddy, Should please. we be coming up here? Daddy, I'm not normally loud up here, and I'm a little bit afraid of the hollow ground, so I actually won't go too much further. Let me just take him back. Mm. <clears throat> Charlie is just seeing to Dexter, who is not actually allowed in this part of the house. Um, and some people might ask why. Well, we were actually told um, by a dog psychologist that sausage dogs actually don't, they're not that happy when they've got a big house to explore. They prefer to have a small area because apparently sausage dogs really like to patrol and protect an area. So if it's smaller, it makes them less anxious. It's one of the many reasons. Like another reason is obviously stairs. Yes. If you want to look after a sausage dog, the one big area of risk is their back. Mm. Every dog breed has a particular weakness and that's the sausage dog, so you don't want them going particularly downstairs, yep. but even up them. And also, we don't really want them in our bedroom. No. So there you go. And if they do a tinkly winkly... Well, they're, they're restricted, <laughs> aren't they? They're restricted to the kitchen, the mm -hmm. pantry and the lounge and they love it and that's the cosy bit of the house. Right, let's yes. do this because I'm getting packaged. Right, take over please, mate. Right, 17 and 18, we're doing yesterday. 17 and 18. Well, you haven't done yesterday's, so... 17. Should I get both the clues get out? Get both the clues out. I would set fairly low expectations with the clues now. <laughs> because I'm just too mentally tired to think of anything clever. 17 and 18. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, that one went down. I always think it's kind of mad to think there's 24 boxes on there. It doesn't look like 24, does it? Okay, day 17. <clears throat> Probably my favourite stove in the house. Remember, you get three guesses, and then if not, the gift gets incinerated. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your definition of stove? Well, I mean a log like burner. A I mean a long burner. Well, we only have charmwood, don't we? We're exclusive. Well, I just lit the one in the living room, so I know it's not there. Is it the one in our bedroom? Could be. Could be. Okay. And in my opinion, the coziest guest room. That'll be one of the upstairs ones. Right, well, where do you want to go first then? Let's Let's do the first. <clears throat> Let's see if it's in there. The coziest guest room. Hmm, okay. So this is the, 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 my favourite stove, right? Is this your favourite stove? No, this is actually my least favourite. What? Yeah, only because, I won't go into it, but the uh, installation was done a bit weirdly. Oh. Don't get me wrong, absolutely love it still, but I think if we had our time again, we'd have it installed slightly differently. Okay, is it the one in our bathroom? Yeah. I love this one because it's the most traditional, plus it's really oh. cute and small, Ooh, isn't it? we got the candles lit. <coughs> a cosy winter bath coupon must be redeemed in winter 2025. 2023, I've said that. There. I.e. December. Five, All right, well, you, could, you can claim it. I don't know. I mean, I'll save it for winter all I'll say is the record company, the, the, yeah, the admin company might question that. And is this um, <coughs> soak? Yeah, open it. It's a nice one. Obviously, we're very lucky we get sent lots of soaks, but this one's, a, I just thought, it looked like a really, it's very natural, I think. Actually natural. Actually not natural. not blagging natural. Do you want to tell everyone your, um, your trick when it comes to bath salts? What is my trick? That you buy horse salts. Oh, yeah. Well, I was seeing a chiropractor. No, sorry, Lisa, a sports masseuse who I see, she was like, yeah, my daughter work, uh, daughter loves horses. And equine Epsom salts are the high, are like the highest quality. They're used in like horse racing. Yeah. So, but I didn't know this, but horses do get bathed. Can you imagine the size of those baths? Ooh. Yeah, it's a similar brand to the balm that we put on you the chest. The salt and oil bath soak. Yeah. Gorgeous. So, Shall I leave it here? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Next, our other favourites. We've got oh. our local Cotswold lavender one, which is really nice. Our favourite Bertioli candles, and then Bamford oil. Oops, careful. There you go. And oh, it's my, my scruffy paper. writing. This is a nice oil, actually, this one from Bamford. That's a nice stocking filler, to be fair. Right. Okay, should I blow the candles out? Yeah, probably should. Okay. Where to now? Right, arguably, house for. Which way should we go? Uh, let's go the, yeah, let's go the, the, that way you're going. Okay. Yeah. Into the dark. Into the darkness. And Dumbledore said, even if the darkest of times, What's the quote? Yeah, we can't. Happiness can be found if only one remembers. Yeah, that's not the right Turn switch. On the light, right. Yeah, there, there you go. There we go. God. Butchered that. 
Imagine that, Dumbledore. We've though. worked out Josie's definitely not Dumbledore. Why? You're either Dobby or you are, who did we work out? You were Moaning, Moaning Myrtle. No, I'm the girl from Bow Battens. <laughs> Fleur Delacour. Fleur Delacour. Oh, well, I I'm not sure. I mean, this is where it just comes down to opinion, right? But we, I think we've already used this guest room, haven't we? Uh -huh, for, so I don't know, one. let's have a look. Turn the lights on. Whee! Um, it's pretty cozy in here. It is. I w we, should, we should stay the night in here. We should explore the house more and actually stay and spend the night in other rooms, but I love our bed. I love our mattress. Can We've got a whiny little Dexy because he's got FOMO. We don't come up here very often to show you guys, do we? It's a bit messy. Oh, this yeah. is the floor project. This floor needs a huge overhaul, but it's, yeah, it's it's something we can't afford to do yet. So one day we'll get here. If money was an object, we'd get onto it because we've got all these cracks everywhere. Right. I do think this room is pretty cozy. Oh, we've got. Oh, let's turn this light on. It just before we do this, look, it is super cozy, right? It's the one with the gnome that. that a lot of people lose their minds over, but I think it's quite cool. His name is um, But this is a cosy room. It is. And it's got a really nice view of the garden. I'm glad you've topped up my burger supplies because I had eaten them all. There you go. Price. Well, next year we're not doing trolley burgers, I've decided, because they are literally not food. They're not. No, so next year I'm going to go down the route of getting something a bit nicer. I'm going to get an apple. Special, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've got another card, which maybe means another experience. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Thursday the 21st, a festive lunch at Highgrove. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I mean, I don't get too carried away. It's obviously going to be with other people that are booked. But... No, it's with the king. Yeah, I, no, I, I know, but he doesn't live there anymore, does he? This is awesome. Um, but I just wanted to do something that I knew, like, Highgrove. I love that you don't bother writing anything, just like, 21st, I know. lunch at Highgrove. Well, to be honest, it's only because I wrote it tonight and I feel exhausted, but I also thought... I don't really know what else I can put on there. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, well, I also thought we'll make a day of it. So, because obviously Highgrove is over. Yeah, so Highgrove from here is about an hour. Today we went, yeah. obviously, okay. it's about, it's just under an hour. It's 50 minutes, I think. Yeah. So, but Tepri's that way. So I thought we could make a bit of a fun day I've of it. I've never seen anyone on YouTube go to Highgrove before. That's going to be so cool to take yeah. everyone there. Yeah, I don't know because we've never been, have we? No. So, I, I think. There was a day where we really wanted to go to that Alan Titchmarsh thing, but we forgot. Did we go to the gift shop? We've been to like the, yeah, oh no, that so was on. In Tepri, there is a Highgrove yeah. gift shop. Anyone that doesn't know, Highgrove House, I'll have a picture on the screen here. It is the most gorgeous Georgian house and it's where. Um, King well, it's, Charles lives. it's King Charles's house. Like yeah. he owns it. It's his private residence. Yeah. It's got gardens. I think it. I it's think really he's. Like today we're going to want to go back in the summer as well because the gardens are spectacular. Yeah, and I I don't know quite how it works with. But I, I just went on their website and this was an event that they were doing this about a month or two ago. But this so, um, it's uh, hence it's very popular though because even a couple of months ago that was the only time I could get. So two forty five is quite a late lunch really? really. But I think we got it's like a three course lunch. Yeah. I think I've already made our selections, but um, yeah, I just That's thought it was something so a bit different. Cool. Uh, and it's so nice that we get to take all the Vlogmas watchers to it. Yeah, I mean, look, the calendar obviously is first and foremost a gift for you, but of course we want to share as much as we can during December. Mm -hmm. And obviously we love sharing about our house, but I think it's nice to show people other old things. I, I think it's in the Cotswolds, isn't it? I, I think I think it's technically just outside the Cotswolds. I mean, for everyone's benefit, I can't remember. I saw someone comment on a video um, that we did recently Warren. saying Stratford's, Stratford's not in the Cotswolds. Not. It's not technically. It's technically not. But my view personally would be this whole area. It depends where you really like. We go to lots of lovely areas that are just at Great Chew, where Soho Farmhouse is. Not technically not in the Cotswolds. If I took a picture of that village yeah. and put it online, people would say that's the Cotswolds. So. It depends on what, if, if you're going by the letter of the law, but then if you go by the letter of the law, a lot of things that people say on YouTube are not you know, true. It's so funny, when we first moved here and a few people were like, you don't live in the Cotswolds, we'd be like, get a map, Doris. Yeah, I mean, we are, we're, we're, we're one of the map, last, but, we are but, but hands up, we're one of the last villages before you leave the Cotswolds, yeah. right? And, and we have no problem map, saying I that. I noticed today when we were driving, because obviously um, Oxford and London Palace is in the Cotswolds, <coughs> but often when Oxford's we're driving... Not. Sorry, uh, Oxford City isn't, but a lot no. of Oxfordshire is. When we're driving on Google Maps, if your Google Maps shows green, that's an ALNB. And if it's grey... Like a darky green colour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if it's grey, it's just n normal land. Yeah. And a lot of where we drive, the road, it's green on one side and it's grey on the other. Yeah. So we are literally... We're like hugging skirting. the border. Yeah. And as I say... 
fully Cotswolds. Yeah, but equally, there are some spectacularly beautiful parts of Warwickshire, Oxfordshire that aren't in the Cotswolds, yeah. like Stratford. Yeah. And yeah. equally, there's some spectacularly that. beautiful parts of this whole arc of the lovely country we live in, which we do want to explore more. But obviously, with the calendar yeah. and with um, with time, cool. it needs to be near, yeah, nearer. But mm -hmm. yeah, any do you know what? Any suggestions on this video uh, of cool sort of period property different things like along the lines of yeah, high clear and high growth nice. yeah there's loads of people properties there, so people suggest them on the video that'd be great Let us know. Boom, yeah, boom. thank you darling that's gonna be so fun lovely dog i am a puppy dog i like to kiss my mummy i'm going to help my mummy edit her vlogmas i'm going to help my mummy do some editing i'm going to help my mummy by leaning on her